Hello, it's Jacob here, and welcome to a brand new quick lesson video. Today, we're going to be using the Scratch app to create our own randomized winter jumper, and it's going to involve lots of art, lots of drawing, and of course, a nice bit of coding too. Over the course of this quick lesson, you're going to create something that looks a little bit like what you're seeing on the screen now, although I suspect your drawings will probably be quite a lot better than mine. As you can see, Every time you run the program, the jumper randomly changes, and there are lots of different elements that we can adjust to make it really personal to you. And all of those drawings are completely custom, so you can make your jumper look however you like. If you're looking at this and thinking, well, Jacob, that's really cool, but there's no way I can work out how to make that work and how to write the code, then don't panic, I've got you. In fact, there are going to be five steps in this video, and you can pause after each one, so you too can create your own randomized winter jumper. In the first step, we're going to use the drawing tools in Scratch to create our own jumper shape. Then, in the second step, we're going to make different coloured versions of that same jumper. Then, we'll create some new sprites as well. In the third step, we're going to get a little bit arty, and you're probably going to spend quite a long time in this part of the video, because here is where you're going to draw the characters and the backgrounds that will make your winter jumper unique. In step number four, we'll have a look at our coding in Scratch. And we'll start off quite basic, just the code that we need to make our jumper work randomly. And then in step number five, we'll take it a step further. We'll start adding in some loops and some sound effects as well. But this is just a starting point. You can then take the project in whichever direction you want to make it truly your own project. Now, the great thing about Scratch is that it works on lots of different devices and on lots of different browsers. I'm going to be using my iPad here with a wireless mouse so you can follow my cursor around the screen but it will work just as well on a Chromebook or a laptop, a Windows computer, any device that you've got access to that can run Scratch. And that's it. As long as you've got access to Scratch and some creativity, then you're ready to get started. So let's do that. Our first job in our empty Scratch project is to delete the little Scratch cat. So click onto there and then press the bin in the corner of that sprite. From here, you want to add a brand new sprite and you want to do this by using the paint tools. So tap on that paintbrush there. Your screen will change now into the drawing editor, but don't worry, you can get back to code at the top by flicking between those two tabs, code and costumes. If you know where they are, you won't get lost in Scratch. We're going to use three different tools to draw the jumper shape. The first one, the arrow, is called the selection tool, and this will let you move objects around and resize them. Underneath there, we've got the reshape tool, which I think is quite magic. I'll show you how that works in a second. And finally, we're going to use the circle tool at the bottom to draw the actual jumper itself. It might seem a bit weird making a jumper out of a circle, but trust me, it works really quite well. At the top of the drawing screen is the colour picker. Now when you click on the colour picker in Scratch, you get three sliding bars. The top one will let you choose the colour you want from the colour spectrum. The second one will make it more or less saturated by mixing in the colour white, and the bottom one will make it darker or brighter by mixing in the colour black. Those three bars together will let you choose any colour you like. Next to it, we have the outline as well and the shape you draw can have an, a fill colour and an outline border. Finally, we can change the thickness of the outline. I'm going to change mine from 4 to 6 to give my jumper a nice kind of comic book style with a nice black outline. And then I'm going to draw my circle, just like this. Now, you might be thinking, well, that doesn't look much like a jumper yet, Jacob, and you would be right, to be fair. But now we're going to use that magical reshape tool I mentioned earlier. When you have this tool selected, if you click anywhere on the edge of your circle, you'll create a new point. And from here, you can pull and manipulate it just like you would do if it were made of clay or putty. You can pull it out, you can squeeze it in, and you can move it around. And you can add other points by just clicking on the outline as well. There are also two handles coming off of every point, and you can use these to make the curve more or less dramatic and to change the direction of that curve. Well, now I've messed up my circle completely, I'll use the undo button at the top to go back to when I have my perfect circle. These buttons are great in Scratch. You don't need to worry about making a mistake or rubbing out something or deleting it by accident. Just undo to go back. Now, I'm going to use that reshape tool, and I'm going to gradually pull out the edges of my circle to make it more jumper shaped. I'll add a few points, and I'll start pulling down to get the bottom of my jumper. And then I'm going to start adding in shoulders and making sure the edges are curved nicely. When you've got the main torso, we're then going to add in the arms themselves. And for this, I would suggest you add two points, one in the shoulder and one in the armpit, and then you pull them both out. Then, when you've pulled them out, add another two points in the same places and use them to sculpt what you've created. I'm making this look hopefully quite easy, 
and it will take a bit of trial and error to get this right. So don't panic if it's really hard, don't forget the undo button is there, and all you need is a little bit of patience to experiment and make your own jumper shape. Now will be a great time to pause this video and get started making your jumper shape. I'll be here waiting when you get back so you don't need to rush, and we'll move on to step number two together. I'm going to use my selection tool to click and select the jumper that I've previously drawn, and then I'm going to use the copy button on that top toolbar. Now, on the left hand side of my screen, I have different costumes for this particular sprite. These aren't different sprites, but they're variations of how that sprite could look at any given time. And then, I'm going to paste on my jumper. The more costumes you have for each of your sprites, the more random and the better your jumper will look. I'm going to make five or six different variations of my jumper by creating a new costume for each, pasting my jumper sprite, and then recolouring it. As long as you're using the selection tool and you've clicked on your jumper, you can then use a colour picker and change it as quickly as that. My top tip here would be to try and make the colours slightly darker so your drawings later will stand out. Make sure you experiment and choose colours that will look good on your jumper. And as I say, try and make them slightly darker so your drawings later on will pop off the screen. Now at this point we're going down to our sprite library in the bottom right corner of Scratch and we're just going to rename that current sprite to Jumper so we know what it is for later. Also check at this point that the X and Y coordinates are both at zero so it's centred on your screen. Then we're going to add a new sprite by pressing that blue button and going on the paintbrush. We aren't going to draw anything just yet but we are going to rename this sprite to Character and we're going to make sure X and Y are both at zero. Then create a third sprite using the paintbrush tool, and this one's going to be called Scene. Again, X and Y should be 0 and 0 to make sure they're all lined up. Finally, for this step, add one last sprite, again on the paintbrush, and call this one Pattern. You probably guessed it, make sure X and Y are 0 here as well. Finally, before we move on to the next step, now would be a great time to save your project if you haven't already. Perfect. Take another pause here while you're getting your jumper costumes made and creating those three new sprites. I'll be here waiting for step number three when you're ready. For this step, we're going to start onto our character sprite, and straight away we want to add some more costumes. So, on the left hand side, press that blue circle and tap the paintbrush. Again, the more costumes we have, the better. Try and aim for at least five if you've got the time. And then on each of these different costumes, you're going to draw a character for your winter jumper. It might be a snowman, or a reindeer, or a star. Whatever you want to be front and centre on your jumper, you're going to draw it here. This part of the activity gives you a good chance to use those drawing tools in Scratch, as well as the colour picker. I'm going to use the paintbrush for this drawing, and as you'll see, doing art at A-level really has paid off for me. I hope your drawings are better than mine. At least I'm giving it a go, eh? Now, on my snowman, I want to make sure that everything is there looking nice and snowman-y, but it doesn't matter about the size, because what we'll do is we'll use the selection tool and draw a box around my finished drawing. When everything's selected, I can then press group on the top toolbar, and then I can just drag the corners and move it around to resize. Don't worry too much how it looks on the drawing stage. Instead, have a look on the actual Scratch app you're making to make sure that the snowman lines up nicely on the jumper. Leave a bit of a gap at the top and the bottom, and make sure your characters are nice and central. Through a quick bit of editing magic, you can now see that I've drawn a very odd looking reindeer, a semi-decent Christmas tree, a very concerning looking Father Christmas, and then a star at the end which really was quite low effort if I'm honest. But that's okay, these don't have to be perfect and you don't have to be an artist. What matters is you bringing your creativity and your personal touch to this project. Again, I've used my selection tool to make sure they all fit on my jumper nicely in the middle. And then I'm going on to my background sprite. Just like with my character, I want to make as many different costumes here as I can, each one with a different background on. I'll start off doing some little snowflakes with different shades of blue, and I can use the copy and paste tool here to save me some time. It might be easier drawing your backgrounds without the characters on your jumper, so do click on that character sprite and hide it if you'd like to. Again, through some editing magic, you can now see some different backgrounds that I've put together, from snowflakes to the North Pole, some Christmas lights, some trees, some presents, that sort of thing. Again, use your imagination, and the more backgrounds, the better. The pattern sprite is there, and that can be used to create a pattern on the top and the bottom of your jumper. This isn't essential, so if you're short on time today, maybe leave it out. But if you have got time, try and create four or five costumes for your pattern sprite as well. 
this would be a good time to save your project as well before we move on to step number four. Don't rush that last stage. Pause the video and take as long as you need. Step number four will be here waiting for you when you're ready. Okay, as you can see now, I've added a few costumes to my pattern as well, so I've got all of my artwork ready to go. Let's jump back onto the jumper sprite, and then we'll go onto the coding tab at the top. The first job we're going to have today is to make sure that our sprites appear in the right position and the right order. And what I mean by that is that your jumper needs to be at the very back of your page, and the character should be at the very front. If they're not in the right order, you may end up with snowflakes in front of your reindeer or your jumper in front of your pattern, and it could get weird. So what we'll do is we'll grab one of the when green flag clicked blocks from the events section and we'll drag that onto our workspace. Then under looks, if you scroll down a little bit, you have the option to move to front back layers. If I click on there, I can choose move to back layer and then I can drag that out underneath the green flag block. That means when I start my program, my jumper will go to the very back of the screen. We're going to add these exact same blocks of code to all of our sprites and you could do it individually or like me, you can drag and drop each algorithm onto a different sprite, just like this. When that's done, you want to go onto the next layer, which is going to be the background, the scene. Because we don't want that to be right at the very back of our page, we want that to be one step forwards. So in the looks library, we're going to get the block that says go one layer forward. Then when we drag that on, the background is going to be one step ahead of our jumper. Now we'll go onto the pattern, and we'll make this one two steps forward, so it's always in front of the pattern and the jumper. And lastly, for the character, we could have a block that says move three layers forwards, but actually it's quicker to change the block that's there already. Tap on the word back and toggle that to front, and then as soon as the program starts, your character will go to the front layer. Now that's all set up, if we press the green flag, it should sort out any confusion on your page at the moment if anything's in the wrong place, and you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now it's time to make our costumes change, and to actually bring in that fun random element to our jumper. So again, in the looks section, we want the block of code that says switch costume to. And then there's a drop down menu of all the different costumes for that particular sprite. When I connect that, if I change the drop down option and press the green flag, the character or the background will change. But I think you'll agree it's not very random. It's always going to change the one that I choose in that drop down menu, so that's rubbish. But don't worry, if we go onto the green section called operators, there's an amazing block called pick random. Drag that one out onto your workspace. And then you want to make sure that rather than being 1 to 10, it's actually the total number of costumes you've drawn. For my character, I've got five possible options, so I'm going to change it to pick random 1 to 5. That green random block will then drop really nicely into your switch costume block, so you get something that looks like what I've got on my screen now. And this means every time I press that green flag, Scratch will choose randomly one of those five costumes for my main character. Of course, we also want this to work for our jumper colour itself, for our background scene, and if you've got a pattern for that too. So I'm going to drag that entire block of code that says switch costume to, pick random 1 to 5, onto my other sprites as well. We'll plug it in in exactly the same place, but if you've got more or less than 5 costumes on a different sprite, make sure you change that number as you go. So for my jumper I've got 6 costumes, the rest I've got 5. Then when you press the green flag, this happens. In fact, every time you press the green flag now, your costumes will shuffle randomly and you'll get your own festive jumper. Of course, we can add more to this and make it more exciting, but we'll do that in step number five. So, pause the video here, get that code working and make your jumper appear randomly, and we'll move on together in a moment. Okay, in our final step, we're now going to completely customise how our program works. And to be honest, you can stop the video here if you've got your own ideas and go and run with them. I think it's much better that you follow the path you want to take with this. However, for those of you that want to see what I'm going to do to my project, I'm going to first of all get a loop, and I'm going to then put my switch costume inside that loop. This means it will repeat 10 times and choose 10 different costumes. However, if I run this straight away, it'll change at the speed of light, and you're not really going to see anything happen. So we're also going to drag in one of our favourite blocks, the wait block. You can choose the time here. I don't want it to be one whole second between changes, because that will be quite slow. I'm going to go for maybe 0.3 seconds instead. Then, when you press the green flag, you will see that that actually changes 10 times before settling on the final choice. But I think I want to go a little bit further, and I want to have some grand announcement when it finishes that loop. So I'm going to go onto my sound library, and I'm going to pick some sound effects. Now, I really like the sound effect called Magic Spell, 
To me, that suggests something's just finished, something magical, something amazing, just like this jumper. So I'm gonna find the magic spell, add it to my sound library, and then add that sound to the very end of my program. This means when that loop is finished, I'll now get a sound effect a little bit like this. Yes, I think that's really good, and it definitely lets you know when the program's finished running. But I think it'd be nice to have some music playing while the costumes are shuffling to build that excitement of what the jumper's gonna be. So back into the sound tab, and I'm gonna find another one that I like. This time it's called Dance Magic. From here, I'm gonna drag that to the beginning of my algorithm, but I'm gonna choose the block that says play sound, not play sound until done. Otherwise, the whole algorithm will pause until that song is finished, so it won't actually flow at the same time. Now, when I play this, first of all, it sounds great, but secondly, the music goes on a little bit too long. In fact, my program's finished about halfway through the music. So if I go back into my sound tab, I can actually click and drag a box and then delete a section that I don't want. There's a little bit of trial and error here to make it the right length, but when it works, this is how it sounds. Okay, I'm really happy with this now. The pattern sprite changes randomly, it does it in a nice loop, and there's sound effects. So now I'm gonna add that loop and the weight block to my other sprites as well. We don't need to add the sound effects to every single sprite, otherwise you'll get them playing four or five times, but that loop is important. When I've done that, we then have a jumper that looks like this. That is so cool. Again, this is just where I'm taking my project. You might be inspired to try something completely different to make your jumper even more personal to you. The very last thing that I want to do is give the user an option to change an element of the jumper if they don't like it. It might be it makes the perfect jumper, but the wrong background colour, or the wrong foreground character. So we're going to add one last algorithm to each of our four sprites. So, under the events section, you want to grab the block of code that says when this sprite clicked. Put that onto your page, and then back in looks, you want the one that simply says next costume. Combine those two blocks together, and every time you click on the part of the picture, it will change the next costume in that set. I'm going to add the magic spell sound effect here as well, just so you get that interaction and that feedback when you click on it. I'll copy that algorithm onto all of my sprites, and I'll make sure that that sound effect is loaded into the sound library for each sprite as well, and then when I press the green flag, my program is finished. First of all, it will generate a random jumper with a really funky bit of music, and then if you want to, you can click on any of those elements and then change how it looks. You've now made a random generated Christmas jumper using Scratch with our all new drawing tools. Well done. Now, that's my project finished, and I'm hoping that your project will be finished very soon as well. I imagine it looks very different to mine, probably some slightly better drawings, if not a lot better drawings, and hopefully you've got some really cool code that makes it personal to you. So today we've learned all about the new drawing tools in Scratch, we've used the vector shapes and the reshape tool, we've used the paintbrush, the recolouring, copying and pasting, we've made costumes, we've made sprites, we've written code, we've used random blocks, we've done a load of stuff, and the end product is your randomised winter jumper. Hopefully yours looks very different from mine, perhaps with different drawings or different style, maybe even different code to make it really personal to you. But what's important is I hope you've had fun making it today. I'd love to see what you've made, so if you or your teacher are able to, maybe they could share it on Twitter or Instagram and tag me at Jacob Walcock with the hashtag Quick Lessons, and I'll have a look and see what you've created today. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful and fun. I'm making lots of quick lessons on my new second YouTube channel, so if you haven't already, please do subscribe down below. And teachers, if you found this helpful and you want to support me making more lessons in the future, I exist on Caffeine and Caffeine helps me make these videos, so if you wanted to buy me a coffee with the link down below, I'd be really grateful and I'll get to work making the next quick lesson even sooner. And that's it from me. There are some more quick lessons on the screen now that you might enjoy, and if not, I'll see you next time.